All right, everybody. Terrence Pop here with another episode of Live in the Lair. And today, I'm going to walk you through the process on how to pick apart propaganda. And most of the time, it can be done with open source information by looking at parallel data making comparisons and then trying to find the answer for that question that we always ask why all right now this briefing is not going to be done at a college level because this is fucking grunt speak and i'm a fucking grunt so you're gonna get it uh dummied down to the 10th to 12th grade education and you're fucking welcome in advance stand by you ever get tired of women staring at that bulge in your pants <laughs> you know what i mean come on lady my eyes are up here right well thanks to kevinsconcealment.com there's the cure for that and at the same time, you get to exercise your Second Amendment rights at work and <laughs> not get fired. You take your bulge, put it in the holster, and <laughs> voila! You guys thought I was talking about something else. That's a homo suspicion point. Space Ghost is on. Go to kevinsconcealment.com and check out if they have a holster for your sidearm. Use the discount code POP, P-O-P-P, -P, links in the description. All right, for those of you that are not familiar with my history, I've got 33 years in the military. 12 years of that was in the National Guard. While I was working in the National Guard, I uh, competed as a professional fighter, held a real estate license, and was a mortgage broker and i also worked a little bit well, some, about a year in uh, investment banking and somewhere in all that i did financial planning had an insurance license series 7 series 62. all right now for life insurance to work they literally have the bets because that's what it is it's a bet you put money down and if you know you die before a certain a period of time the insurance company pays out the policy and if you die after that certain age they don't pay they pay very little to nothing so they I mean and life insurance has been around for a long time and those guys got that shit down uh, to a science in fact when I was doing uh, the insurance portion of my training, I did not like it because it was so fucking just cold. Just cold, man. Like, they had that shit down to a science. Like, you know, what um, illnesses you have or had in the past, any injuries that you might have had in the past, uh, any of your activities that you do that are, you know, on the dangerous side. And they literally figure this all out. And come up with that that magic number that you pay for a premium okay and then for all of the time you pay that premium say you pay it for 20 years you, you get a life insurance policy like in your late 30s early 40s which i recommend because as you get older you know it gets more expensive and then you might get some health issues that are gonna fuck it up with okay so i mean they got that down to an it's an absolute science it is crazy how accurate that is okay and what the insurance company doing is they're like okay this is gonna this guy's gonna pay us x dollars for 20 years what does that add up to okay we if he does not die by this date we get all of that money if somehow he you know or if, if he dies before that date you know we keep the money but yet we have this per, this whole insurance policy we got to pay pay out to him. Say it's like a million and a half. Okay, so if you die before the allotted time, the insurance company loses money. All right, 
Now, when is the last time you actually heard of any insurance companies going bankrupt or out of business? You know, I'll wait. The answer is almost never. All right. There's whole colleges. There's all kinds of shit around this stuff. They figure this stuff out. All right. So, you know, let's start over here. And uh, I got to get this to fit. Okay. Do, 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 do. All right. All right. I don't want you guys to bitch about me not fitting uh, the windows in here. So, but this is just a basic life insurance mortality table. Okay. It just goes by age, male, female, and it gives you the basic life expectancy. Now, what you don't get here on this particular um, page is when you look into the actual, you know, mortality uh, tables and books, you know, you have all of the other stuff that you put in there that adjusts the stuff, you know, age, illness, you know, anything that runs in your family, you know, do you like skydiving or do you engage in uh, dueling or whatever it is? That's going to, you know, if they're going to come up with a premium for you. All right. And like I've said before, this place, I mean, they have this shit down, uh, to, you know, to a T. Now this one here is from 2013 data. It does, hasn't changed much in the past five years, even though we've had the EIU out and about. And that stands for unspecified illness of unknown origin, or it's all vowels. It's a woman with a dick in her mouth. This is from Wall Street Journal. And this one, uh, when was this published? In uh, December 9th of 2021. All right, so a lot of times when you're trying to confirm intelligence estimates or um, rumor control or you're looking for um, any patterns in the data that is not being, you know, told to the troops, which is basically you guys, you do stuff like this. All right, so you can't hide the numbers, okay? Everything in the Western world is run by numbers, okay? I mean, you get up in the morning, you got to get up at a certain time, you get paid a certain amount per hour, you drive so far to work, gas costs this much, I mean, in any any given moment, a person with an average IQ in the Western world is always running through the numbers in his head. What's he's going to get at the end of the month, what his expenses are going to be, and that's just the way it works. You cannot escape the numbers. You can't. Especially when those numbers are attached to money. Because money is the root of all evil. Money is the reason why communism and socialism doesn't work and people die by droves. Uh, that and corruption, but that's another video. Okay, it's, it's just money. So if you see here, you know, last year death benefits, you know, jumped 15%. Biggest increase since 1918. A hundred years. So... In 1918, we had this huge flu epidemic, and apparently the insurance companies, you know, took a beat down. Did they go out of business? I'll wait. No, they did not. Just so you get that right. All right, so here we got Wall Street Journal bitching about money. I mean, a lot of stuff they cover in the Wall Street Journal, politics and money, so I'm not surprised here. Uh, let's see what we got here. Death benefit payments rose 15.4% in 2020 to $90.43 billion. All right. Now these are 2020 numbers. So you're going to, you're seeing a lot of stuff in these numbers that took place in late 2019 up to the middle of 2020 and it pretty much cuts off towards the last quarter of 2022. A lot of times those numbers that they get from the end of that of the reporting year, 2020, get stacked on to the next year. Don't ask me why 
That's just the way it goes. Now, I can't go to the full story because I am not subscribing to Wall Street Journal. They can uh, suck my kiakaka. And yes, I'm drinking tea. I'm trying to stay hydrated. Fuck off. Uh, let's move on to the next one here. Okay, now... I got this. Now, I tried to track down all these numbers individually on the CDC website, and you can do that. It's just I would have a bunch of different tabs, and I'd have to jump around a lot. Okay, and this is, you know, basically myessentialnews.com. From February, updated February 2, 2021. So this is fairly, you know, it's not super recent. It's like a year old, but, you know, what are you going to do? Okay, so if you look here at the death rates, start off in uh, 2014 to 2020. Okay, we got, uh, you know, what is that? 2.6 million, 2.7 million, 2.7 million, 2.8, 2.8, 2.8, and 2.9. With an increase. Of 3.28 percent in 15, an increase of 1.16 in 2016, an increase of 2.52 in 17, a 1 percent increase in 18, half a percent in 19. Okay, well, with this whole thing started towards the end of 19, so like I said earlier, the numbers and craziness that took place at the end of 19 got stacked over here in 2020. So you have the craziness that took place at the end of 19 all through 2020, and you have an increase of 2%. Okay, a lot of people are like, oh, it's terrible, it's 2%. Okay, well, what happened in 2017 when it went up 2.5%? And what happened in 2015 when it went up 3.28%? Did we destroy our economies? Did we hand out trillions of dollars? Uh, did we destroy oodles and oodles of small businesses because of uh, fear mongering? No. Okay. So what do we see here in the placement of these numbers? I'm looking at the data here from 2020. And I'm not really that impressed here. Okay. It, it was just a standard year. Okay. You know, 2015 was worse when it came to deaths. Okay. And uh, 17. Okay. So these, this is an example of the question why. Okay. You're asking the question why. There Technically, there is no answer other than the fact that, you know, this is just a, you know, a plus or minus within the average that happens every year. Okay, because you would figure if we're having a big uh, kind of large event where lots of people are getting sick and dying, you would think that there would be a much bigger skew in those numbers. Okay, because whenever I hear about, uh, you know, large instances of disease and die-off, you know, I'm thinking, you know, bring out your dead, you know, people wrapped in plastic, stacked like cordwood by, you know, the curb right next to the garbage cans because you got the death truck to get them and then you got the garbage truck, you know, that's if everything was to stay in place. You know, because if, if it got that bad, I'm thinking it probably wouldn't. All right. So, you know, this is just the numbers right here. All right. And again, you know, tearing apart propaganda, when you apply logic, reason, stats, numbers, and truth, you can almost, well, you will always rip it apart. All right. This is another graph that I tracked down. Now, this one comes right off the CDC.gov website. All right, and this is the life expectancy in years, 
Okay, you, you can see this one is going up here. In 2018, went down quite a bit because we had, you know, the flu in World War One. But after that, it's, it continues to go up. There, there's, there's some jumping around in this line. But if you were to, you know, basically average out all these numbers, you would see there's an upward, you know, curve on this. Okay, and this one here is the what is the age-related death rate? Okay, you can see right here that this age-related death rate has been going down. All right, so we're gonna zoom this out here. You can learn a lot by looking at graphs like this. Okay, like I'm a visual person. I read a if I read an article and it's a page, page and a half, and there. There's no graphs. I'm going to have a hard time with this. But when you can, you can plot it out on a graph, it, it really makes everything come into clarity. All right, so let's go over here. This is 1999, 2002, 2009. And, and this is when the H1N1 flu season came about. Okay, and you'll see between here and the end of this graph, which is roughly 2018, it's pretty even. Okay, I think maybe right here. No, no, there isn't even a bump here. Nothing. Not a bump here for the H1N1. And not a bump here either for the H1N1. Everything seems to be pretty even keel. Now, I'm trying to see if I can get the updated numbers or a graph like this that takes uh, after 2018 to current. But right now, a lot of the data that you're getting from 2021 has been tampered with. You got a lot of people turning in their meat suit for the mineral deposits. And uh, the way that they went about the turn in is being interpreted a certain way by the hospitals and medical professions to jack up a certain number to basically cause fear. Because when you have a lot of fear, you can move a lot of the sheeple around in the middle of the herd and then influence where that herd goes to a certain extent. Okay, And usually they will be successful if... There isn't really good sheep dogs around there to keep the wolves at bay, if you know what I mean. Now, this is the historical deaths per thousand. This starts like in 1950. And then you have uh, the percent change at the bottom. All right, you can see here, you know, we're seeing some jumping around. 78 and two, uh, ooh, 2008 here. 2009. That's when the H1N1 kicked off. Okay. Now you look over here. All right. And, and this is this is important, so pay attention. This is 2006. You can see the deaths per thousand goes down to 2008. And then in 2009, we get the H1N1. It starts going up. Now this is 2013. And look what we see here. This number is going up. Why is that? Why are these numbers going up here in years that really didn't have the EIU floating around? Uh, can anyone answer that? Maybe it has something to do with the growth of the population, the aging of the population, and just the natural effects of people getting dumped off the conveyor belt into the compost heap so they can turn in their meat suit for its mineral deposits. It's just common sense. Unfortunately, in, you know, in the current date and time group, common sense has become so rare, it's now listed in the dictionary of superhero powers in Marvel Universe. It's fucking insane. Okay, now if we keep going here to the right, now... This is the current, what's going on currently. All right. Now, this is United Nations projections here. All right. First of all, fuck the UN. They're grossly corrupt and inefficient. 
And I really don't want them poking around in my fucking business. Because as far as I'm concerned, they're worthless fucks. And they're basically a bunch of belly leeches sucking off the taxpayer dollars of the United States. Since for the most part, we pay a lion's share of their fees and costs. That's another video. I'm sorry. Next one. All right, this one is from the CDC control. This is flu deaths. All right, you'll see season 10, 11 right here. They don't have 0, 9, 10 in here. That's H1N1. Okay, because those numbers are, are were very high. And there wasn't uh, mandates, lockdowns. And uh, paying people billions of dollars to stay home because they're too afraid to face reality and the dangers of the everyday world. Yes, you heard me. I said the dangers of the everyday world. Because when I showed you the death rates, they really haven't changed that much. Even though we're in the middle of a um, time in history when supposedly mass amounts of people are dying from an unknown illness of unspecified origin. Eow. All right. So let's look down these death rates or these uh, illnesses for the uh, flu here. Or what are we seeing here? We're coming off the tail end here of H1N1. And this one here, 2012, 2013. It's a pretty high year. Okay. You see what's going on here? Staying pretty much 25 to 35. Okay. We had a spike of 41, 17, 18. Oh, look at that. Cut in half, 18, 19. Okay. And 19, 20, 35,000 estimated. It doesn't go anything beyond that. So, yeah. You're not really seeing a lot of craziness here in regards to the flu. It's been pretty consistent. Um, I do question these numbers here, and I definitely question these numbers here. Uh, in, you know, 1920. Especially when they come from CDC.gov. Okay, there's been some craziness going on with the reporting and so, and, and so forth. Now, here's another uh, graph. Now, this is pictures. All right. Now, at the top of the graph here, you have the deaths, then you have the hospitalizations, and then you have the illnesses. Okay. So, in 10, 11, you had 37,000 people go to the great beyond, 12,000 the year after that, 43,000, 12, 13, 38,000, 13, 14, 51,000, 14, 15. Okay, and you have 23, 30, 52,000 died in 17, 18, 18, 19, 28,000 died in 19, 20, 20,000 people died. I don't know. I don't know. But this is... This happens year after year. I mean, your flu is not going away. The common cold is not going away. And this new version of the common cold that may or may not have been created in a gain-of-function laboratory is now out in the real world, and it's not going anywhere. Maybe that's why... Um, ah, I won't even go into that here. That'll cause problems and get me flagged. All right, now we're going to go back to 2009. All right, H1 pandemic here, 2009. All right, now, this, from what I understand, this was a pretty much a shit show that took place in 2009, 10, and 11. Okay, there was very high uh, illness rates, death rates, a lot of hospitalizations and so forth. But we didn't shut the world down. We didn't print trillions of dollars. Okay. Because they could have basically done the same thing 
And we're fortunate they didn't do this in 2009 because, you know, we had the president was a Democrat and uh, they could have done this whole fucking thing they're doing now and started it, you know, 11, 12 years ago. So I guess we can count our blessings that we got a little more time out of it. But I, I really don't know. Now, one of the things they noticed while they're going through um, the 2009 to 2011 H1N1 flu is um, there was a big uptick in people having to be hospitalized because they were obese. Okay. So what are we learning here? What are we learning? That these type of illnesses go after the old and the infirm, just like every other fucking disease. And if you went to college or paid attention in high school, you would know that. This is, this is not rocket science here. Okay? I mean, this is the way it works. So the excuses, or whatever the excuses are for the governors in the blue states who put individuals into nursing and rest homes that were infected with the EIU, they should have known better. This is basic knowledge here. You don't fucking do that. And, you know, they're talking about the antiviral drugs and so forth to help fight off the H1N1. And some of that stuff they're using, you know, for the EIU to... Uh, it has a certain... Inf it, it, it does have a certain influence, but, you know, it is what it is. I'm trying to get through here. And, okay, now here we go. In June 11th, 2009, the WHO signaled that a global pandemic of H1N1 influenza was underway. What the fuck did the WHO do about it back then? I really don't recall hearing that much about this in the news. Do you? Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But I don't really remember the amount of hype back then that we have nowadays especially in the past two years. You know that 15 days to flatten the curve that turned into two years? How do you like your trial run of communism? <laughs> and you can read down this whole thing right here. Just You can do, you can do a search for cdc.gov h1n1 flu. And um, there's like four or five pages on this. All right, also, I'm going to read this part to you. Also in July of 2009... The CDC reported findings in the MMWR that indicated a striking prevalence of obesity in intensive care patients who were confirmed to have H1N1. All right, now I'm going to go a little bit deeper in here. We're going to ask another why. Okay, now. What is another thing obese people have problems with? And I'm not fat shaming anyone. This is, well, actually I am because I don't fucking care. But these are facts. If you have a high body mass index, you are at, at a significant increased chance of developing type 2 diabetes, heart disease. You can have clogged arteries. MS, high blood pressure, you know, uh, I'm not even going on the list. There's like five or six on the list that go along with being overweight. So you have the same problem virtually in 2009 with very similar numbers that's affecting the victims virtually the same. But somehow in 2009, it wasn't even a speed bump on the media radar. And it, and it was that way for 2010, 2011. It was a speed bump. In fact, I remember being forced to go get uh, the flu vax in 2010 by Dina, the fucking cunt. So you can take it with a grain of salt. Now, I know I've been going off and showing you guys the receipts here. 
Okay. Now it's just one, th it's one thing for me to get up here and then you just, you know, turn my mouth into a water hose and try to get you to drink some information. Maybe it'll stick. Maybe it won't. Or I slow it down a little bit. I put the receipts here and I speak to you guys at levels where you can understand it. Cause most people walking around out there don't understand biology. Uh, not really up to speed on math or physics. Certainly, they are just a clusterfuck when it comes to history and government and everything else. So, if you could uh, speak to those people at the lowest level and maybe get some of this spaghetti I'm throwing at the wall to stick, might be the world might be a better place, I'm just saying. But this goes on and on and on right here. I mean, this is like 11 pages long. All right, so... This is it right here, to tearing apart propaganda. Now, I'm really concerned here because the Veers database is being tampered with. Uh, they're monkeying around with who they consider fully uh, poked and smoked and who isn't. And that standard is changing all the time. And I think Israel just went into... Um, having their fourth booster okay so if there's going to be a lot of bad shit coming down the pipe we're going to probably see a lot of it happen there first just saying of course though their their climate is a little warmer than ours it's actually a lot warmer and uh countries in warmer climates don't really get hit as hard but we'll see we shall see all right, hopefully you enjoyed that. I know it's long and boring, but, uh, you know, we are in the information war age right now. So you need to be able to do long and boring and look into the details and then be able to ask those questions why. And if those answer, if you ask those questions why, you know, versus the propaganda and they can't answer, then you know it's bullshit.